Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, X.E.L.O. And today what I want to do is do some questions and answers. I, I get a lot of questions from you guys about how certain things I have set up inside of my Reaper currently. So I want to just go over a couple of them. Uh, the current version I'm going to be using in this video is going to be 7.02. So if you're not up to that, then you may want to just update to that version of Reaper so you can actually see or get exactly how I got it. Let's go. All right, so here we are in Reaper and the theme that I'm using is called Reaper Tips. A lot of people ask me about this. I do use Reaper Tips instead of the default one. I just like the way this one looks. I like the way it's set up. I like the way uh, Alejandro added like the blue in here. It is, it just fits me. Like I have my keyboard is blue, my like, Lights usually are blue. I, I like blue, you know, even though I'm wearing red right now. Who would have figured? But um, yeah, that is why um, I really like this uh, setup. So I'm gonna kind of go through a couple of things that people have asked me about. All right, so before we get into a deep dive in this video, I wanna make sure you guys have all the things that you need, all your tools. So one of the tools that you need is called SWS. This is a file extension that you can use inside of Reaper to do and unlock different things. Another thing you would need is called Reapack. Reapack is another way to unlock Reaper to its full potential, but you can't have one without the other kind of thing. Uh, you have to have SWS to actually use the Reapack, so definitely get the SWS and then get Reapack. If you're not sure how to actually do this, I have a video explaining it. It should be in this card up here at the top. Hopefully I can remember to put them up there, but the card should bring you straight to the video. So you can pause this video here Make sure you download the SWS file and the Reapack and come back. If you have that installed, the next thing you wanna do is make sure you save your configuration. This is for people who are brand new to Reaper and have never used Reaper before. I've seen a lot of people actually coming over to Reaper due to the Reaper 7 videos and things that are out there. So I wanna make sure I kinda of cover all the bases. So if you have downloaded Reaper recently and you're not sure what else to do, the next step is very crucial. I wanna make sure that you actually have things backed up so that nothing goes out of whack and out of place. So let's show you how to do that. All right, so what you wanna do is go up to your options and once you're in options, go down to preferences. And once you're in preferences, the first option, it says general. So you wanna make sure you're on the general and you have these options here that say import configuration, export configuration. So the reason you want to export your configuration, so this will leave Reaper at its default state. So you don't have to worry about if you mess something up. You can always go back to this and it'll revert it back to the original version of how you had Reaper, All right? So make sure you do this export file and then you just uh, save it. And it may take a little bit of time. Make sure, And it's going to save it in its own folder so that you don't have to worry about where it's actually going. It's going to save it in its own configuration folder. So if you needed to actually import it back in, you just hit on this import configuration and it'll bring you to your folder where you have your configuration set up. Right? So just make sure you have the default backed up for the configuration. All right. And another thing people ask me about is how do I get my piano roll to work and function kind of like FLs does? And I do have a video showing you how to do that as well. I won't go through all the steps in here, but the video will definitely show you how to do it. If you don't want to go through the video and you just want to have the configurations, I do have the configuration file set up on my website, xeloh.com. The link should be below in the description so you can uh, go and purchase that. It's very cheap. It's like eight bucks just to download the configuration file. It'll support the channel and you'll actually get the piano roll set up the way I currently have it in my setup now. All right, and another question people ask me is how do I get my Docker over here to the left-hand side where it's completely just taking up the left-hand side? I'm gonna take everything off the screen so that it's just the track area, right? So I'm gonna bring up my browser by itself and your browser can be anywhere. So I can move this from here, right? This is it right here, the, the browser or the media explorer. So I can put it at the bottom right? And it'll take up the whole entire bottom of the screen, right? I could put it on this right-hand side. You see the blue line? Let me know. I could put it over here. Uh, it lets me know I could put it at the top, right? So you have options of where you want to drop it. You can just leave it floating in the middle of the air if you wanted to. Uh, and you can also dock it, right? So you have those options to dock and undock. This little button here will give you an option to dock and undock it. 
So let's say that you first dock it and, and the dock is down here. There's a little blue line. You see a little blue line I can put it in front of or behind my mixer. So I'm just gonna put it down here in the mixer section. Uh, I also have my toolbar set up over here on this left-hand side. So that's why this toolbar is just floating here uh, on the left-hand side. So let me undock this, right? So now it's the whole bottom of the screen, the Media Explorer. So let's say I, I wanted to put it over here where I have this stuff. I can grab it and drag it over there. And now it's right here. I have my whole browser in this little section here. So if I grab it, right, I hold down control and control will allow me to actually add it here. So now I have this and the mixer and my CPU usage thing over here as well. So if you wanted to be over here in this corner, you can just go all the way over here or you can like have it do a halfway by holding down control. See how it brings it down here. So now I can have this little section over here and boom, I can have that as another piece as the bottom down here as well with the mixer if I wanted to do that. But you know, more majority of the time, I'm gonna have it over here all the way to the left-hand side. And that way it'll have this own column over here. I know it may sound a little tricky, uh, but it does work that way. That is kind of the way it works. So now how I have this one at the, I want this one to be completely at the bottom. See, I have, a, if I hold down control, it'll give me the option to move this down right at the bottom, right? So I wanna grab this one and move it around. And now I have that one on top. So now I wanna move this to underneath. So I'm holding down control. And now you see it at the bottom and it'll move this stuff around. And it gives me an option to kind of move this around just by kind of dragging this. So I'm gonna bring this all the way down And this is currently how I have mine set up inside of Reaper. So I know that seemed like a lot, but it just gives you that option to do that. So if you're not able to move something to where you want it to be, try hold down control and then move it to where you want it to be inside of the doll. Hopefully that helps. All right, and another thing people ask me about is like these buses down here. Well, I, I have them as buses. You don't necessarily have to do this, but uh, a lot of people have asked me about it. So if you wanted to do this, so I'm gonna delete these. Um, this black line here is a track that I have as a separator. I know Reaper 7 comes with separators, but I still like this separator. I don't know why, but I just do. So let's say you added tracks, right? So you have one, two, three, four, So we have five buses here, right? I'm gonna move this over. So we have five buses and you can see them up here as well. So these were the buses that you always use like compressor, reverb, delay, chorus, uh, filters, whatever you usually use as your main bus stuff, you can actually have them set up here. So now you wanna make sure that they're not shown at the top. So you can go up to view and you wanna go to track manager. And once you're in here, you have these little buttons for that says TCP. The TCP is the track lane. The MCP is the mixer. So if I wanted to remove them, I can go here. And as you see, they'll remove them from the track view. So you won't have to see them in the track view, but they will always be in the mixer. So you can see them in a the mixer. Uh, it does work vice versa. So I can remove things from the mixer. As you can see, I can remove that from there or I can move her from up here as well. Either way, um, it does give you that option to do that. So that is how I currently have the buses set up inside of Reaper. All right, some people ask about my uh, setup here for my Reaper tips. So I do have it set up to where anytime I add a track, it'll add a re EQ every time I open up a new, a new audio file. All right, and in order to actually set this up, what you wanna do is go to your effects. So once you're in this effects section here, you can go to effects and you can go to save chain as a default for new track. So anytime I open a new track, whatever you have set up in these defaults will actually set up whenever you're making a new track. So I really like that feature. In fact, in there, 
All right, some people have asked how I have this layout here like this. And that's just because of the theme editor. So if you go to your options and you go to themes and you can go to this theme, adjust color controls, click on that. And these are the track controls, which is the track area, right? So these are the track controls. You have different layouts that you can use. Um, as you see, my default is, is selected right now. Uh, if you wanted to zoom in and kind of see what I have set up on here, this is what it, it looks like. I have 100%, 150 or 200. You can apply any one of these. Uh, I have my folder indented, right? And of course I have nothing hidden, but this right here, this labels and values, and that's if not selected. But yeah, so you can definitely copy these settings, just freeze the video, go to yours and change them if you want it to look like this on this side. All right. So another common question that I get is about effects and uh, can you like drag and drop effects? And the answer is yes. Uh, usually if you hold down shift and hit F on your keyboard, it'll bring up your effects and you can just kind of drag and drop stuff into, into Reaper. So if I grab this uh, expand and drop it over here, it's going to pop up the expand itself and boom, you have it pop up in the middle of the screen. All right, and if you do want yours to pop up in the middle of the screen, um, I've had some issues with this before. Hold down control, hit P on your keyboard, and that'll bring up your preferences. Once you're in general, right, you're gonna go down here to where it says advanced UI system tweaks. Click on that, and then you wanna scroll down to where it says this modal window positioning, put it on center, on current screen. So anything that's in the middle or your current screen that you're on, it should put it in the middle. Uh, it doesn't work for every single thing, but it works for the majority of things. So definitely set that up if you're having an issue with it not staying in the middle of your screen. All right, so you can drag and drop inside of Reaper as well. And another thing that um, I actually do that may not be something that people do all the time is I hold out, if you hold out control and P, go to project, and then they have this option in here now that says uh, item looping defaults. I don't believe this is on here before. I believe this is only in seven where they actually have a little shortcut for it now. And I usually turn all these off. So what this will do, it'll help you when you're actually creating tracks so you can actually extend stuff out without it just looping those extensions. If you like looping, you can turn it on, but I just see it as a, hind <laughs> a hindrance in the way of kind of doing what I want to do with the tracks and audio files and stuff like that. So I usually leave all of these off. If I want to turn it on, I can usually just turn it on on a specific track by just double clicking it or hitting F2 and then going to the section to turn it on. So uh, let's say I had this kick, right? So you have this kick and you see kind of if I extend it out, it's not going to loop, right? But if I right click on it and I go to the item properties, which is F2, or if I double click on it, it'll bring up my item properties. You can set loop source, right? And once you hit apply, now when I drag this over, as you see, it'll do another kick and loop it on there. Uh, that's what this is, uh, that looping is for inside of Reaper. I don't necessarily like it, so I usually turn it off. But uh, it is something that you have an option to choose, but make sure if you're in here, you have to hit apply. If you just hit okay, it's not gonna do it. Make sure you apply whatever changes you make inside here. So with that being said, I hope you guys really got something out of this video. Um, these are some of the things or questions that I usually get a lot of inside of my comment section. So I wanted to express it and give you guys a video of how to actually do some of the things you've been asking for. So with that being said, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And once again, thank you for watching learning reaper till the next time peace hey you yes you youtube wants you to watch this video next man go ahead and click it i'll wait <laughs> no nah, i'm just playing i'm not gonna keep waiting here all right i will see you in the next video though peace